what you got planted already. Browsing and all that starting. Oh yeah, you can see the little nipples on too. You know, this plant's gonna get a lot taller and we got another four weeks of solid growing here before we start to cool down. So this plant is gonna get, you know, a lot larger, which you got, it's pretty heavy right here. But then if you look over here to the right, it's thin, right? So what we'll do today is we'll come in to the areas that don't have any of these plants that are starting to grow and we'll come in here and we'll basically reseed some of those areas so it'll eliminate some of these bare spots. And then we're gonna do something kind of special. I'm not gonna tell you what it is until we start putting it up, but I think you're gonna like it. And this is something that we can, I mean, you've done before. I mean, you're known, I feel like you're known for this whole watering hole thing, but this is different than you usually, you're usually getting the big thing out. And for this size, this is gonna work for us, right? Well, yeah, because we can do this manually by putting it in, you know, with some shovels instead of having to get big equipment back here. So I just kind of lay it in here and kind of go around and mark the edges, you know, and then so I know where I got to dig. But you're only going to have to dig down a foot or so. Yeah. You could leave it above ground if you wanted to. Yeah. It really could, but it just cosmetically, it's going to blend in. This has got a gritty surface. We'll throw a little bit of dirt in there. Then you just bring in... Uh, you know, put your water tank or hook your water tank up to the back of the Polaris and you can come in here and manually fill this up. They make three sizes. This is the mid size, which is in the middle, and this will hold 80 gallons of water. Oh, okay. You know? be a lot of five gallon buckets then. <laughs> I, I prefer pulling the tank. <laughs> yeah, you'd be making It'd be uh, a lot of trips. 16 trips. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so we'll just dig this in right now and then it's it's within it's going to be your your blind we're going to put the blind right there by that oak tree where your tree stand is now even if you don't for some reason get the blind in you still got your tree stand right there it's in perfect shooting range yeah you know the deer coming from this way and now we're going to have a water source right here perfect i mean a lot of people miss this little connection where they plant a food pot but then they don't provide a water source in my opinion, even if you got water on your property, work it's just like you. You know, if you got a if you got a faucet upstairs and you're living on a two-story house and you're going to get up in the middle of the night and get a drink, you're gonna just go in your bathroom that's upstairs. You're not gonna go all the way downstairs. To the kitchen sink, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean it's convenience. So making it a one-stop shop is always the you know kind of my my thing, you know. Main, that's what we started with maintaining making this thing as good as it could be and now providing that water right here in the plot all they got to do is get up I mean they might be better 50 yards from here they get up work their way into the plot. everything they need to do right here right here one-stop shop and then I mean I've seen it with your I mean your show and, and all your different hunts and stuff like it gives you an opportunity to kill an animal here too like you're stopping here you have a point where they're gonna come like they're sitting probably broadside or you know at least they're still yeah. um, they're not, you know, moving and feeding and grazing. So, like, given this an opportunity to be within bow range, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see like actual come full turn yeah, and, and have and have animals actually come and use it. You know? Yeah. Right, let me grab a shovel so like you're not just shoveling. Uh, yeah, I have a shovel to fit your hand too. Yeah, yeah, per <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Oh, you know, a half inch above. I mean, what do you want? When you, when you back off and look at it, like, you can't even see anything. You no, know it's here. It, it blends well. That's what I like about the earth ponds is just because of the finish, you know, you don't see it. And it blends in nice with this dirt. So, hey, we got a water hole. We got a water hole. I'm, I say, I'm very much so looking forward to, even, I don't care what animal, I, you're going to get a porcupine sipping out of this thing the first Snapchat. But eventually <laughs> to get a deer that comes here specifically after eating in front of my stand, that's going to blow me away. That's like, that's so <laughs> sick. That's so cool. It literally, it's like a magnet for him. Man. That's the idea, Sam. That's so <laughs> sick. The other thing is once you take this fence down and the deer are using this plot, this is a great place to put a camera because the deer are gonna, this is gonna be a focal point. So put a camera on a stand 10 feet away, point it at here, you'll get every deer that comes here to drink. Great inventory spot versus 
you know, different parts of the plot, you might miss them. But oh, yeah. this being a particular drawing card to the plot, great place to inventory okay. using the camera. Cool. All right. The key to this electric fence is that we're making two rows of fence. Basically. One inside the other? Yep. Okay. It's a depth perception issue for the deer, is if they come up to it, first of all, they'll probably get snapped when they first smell the first wire, the front wire, and that's the hot wire anyways. So then they see one behind there, and they don't want to just simply jump over to go through that first one because there's a secondary wire behind that. Oh, so they, can't, they know they can't clear it, they see the second one. It's depth perception. Okay, that makes sense. Otherwise, you just have them, because if it's only this side, they'll freaking just guard over, and who cares about a fence? Yep, that's exactly oh, right. Oh, that makes sense. So you make a trap. And yeah. they feel like it's a trap, so they oh, don't like it. Oh, you've done this before, haven't you? Uh, once just, or twice. Just once or twice? Yes. I'll grab gloves. Uh, this will be our first corner. And uh, we'll start going. One down. Oh, Ten to six, go. Sixteen to go or whatever however we bought. This is what we'll put the actual solar panel on. So Pat, um, I mean, it's, it's tough to say because it's 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 year two. When, I mean, do you pull it off before you want to kill an animal, or when you think the best time to kill an animal? Like we have we have opener here, and then there's opening weekend, right? But that necessarily isn't the best time. But if you got, is it? Do you let the deer tell you what? Or I mean, well, how do you make they don't that decision? Take, they don't take long to figure out that there's no fence here. But okay. believe me. Um, there's a couple of ways you can do it. I've done it a couple different times where I've taken the entire fence down. And sometimes I just leave the posts up and I take a, basically uh, an extension cord reel yep. and I just tie, you know, untie it on the one end here and you can just stand here and it'll free flow because there's no knots. It'll go through these insulators and I'll, you'll be able to reel it all up right here. Yeah. Get four of those and then mark them right, you know, main plot or whatever so you know and then it'll fit this every time because the length is already cut. Um, or... What you can also do, let's just say you're going to archery hunt over there and that's your bow stand and the stuff. You could fence, you could take and, and take half of it down and run it from those, those secondary stakes across and keep part of it fenced for late season. Yeah. I mean, it works good because that happens quite often when we're planting soybeans. You know, a deer, the deer will just vacuum them all up. And you want some of them be there for late season, yeah. so I'll, I'll a lot of times go in there and just keep half of them fenced. And then the nice part is they got to go to the stuff that's not fenced, and a lot of times that that makes your your shot a lot less, you know, because they're right yeah. in front of you. Yeah, at least gets them close. Mm-hmm. They're sectioned off. So uh, we're gonna overseed because I mean there's some areas that took better than others, so we're gonna go over it again. Mm -hmm. And then depending on what you want to do for taking off, I and mean, we're good. This I mean this will sit till season. This is ready to go now. You know, you could come in here with some 1919-19 fertilizer and a hand spreader yep. and just walk about and spread it just to give it a little extra kick, which wouldn't be a bad idea. Okay. Um, but if, as long as we got the rain that they're calling for, we don't have to come in here and cult the pack. Plus, we don't want to wreck the stuff that's already growing. Yep. So we just want to fill in these areas, which are already moist. And yeah. I mean, it should be, it should grow nice, and you're going to have a heck of a plot here, especially when now it's protected and the deer can't overbrowse it. Yeah, because they'll knobble them so fast. Oh, yeah. yeah. When they get to be about that height, they just come in there and just, you know. All day long. Yep. All right. So, let's do some seeding and wrap this thing up. Kind of one last final thing I think we could do today to sweeten this little honey hole up a little better it's 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 turned into a little honey hole is what it is yeah i want you to pay attention to what has happened here you came in here and brush hogged this edge and kind of cleaned this yeah. up right what you also cleaned up is any overhanging branches or any you know licking branches mm -hmm. that they might have established so what we're going to do is re-establish licking branches 
which then turn into scrapes. We're gonna wire it down at that perfect height for a deer for a licking branch, and then we'll kind of clear the debris underneath it, and they'll they'll start using it as a scrape. I mean, they're just, it's like a dog to a fire fire hydrant. We're gonna start the wire right about here, right on this, on this uh, fork. Yeah. And we're gonna wire back to the main trunk. Oh, so you're just making a bridge there. Because you don't want anything underneath it because otherwise they'll be hitting it, right? Yeah. Well, they're gonna be using gonna be the, end the end of it. Here. Yeah. yeah, they're gonna be using the end of it, so. And you're gonna go back to there, and I gotta. All the way to the base? Um, no, back to the, about the middle of it right there. Okay. Wrap it around a couple times. Right about there? Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Right here, you know. You want them to hit this licking branch. Because they, they'll even stand up on their back legs, but this is about that perfect, that it's before. about eye level. You know, one final step is just kind of making sure you don't have any rock or any sticks down here. All right, that looks beautiful. Like that literally, yeah, that looks beautiful. When they start using this, it's a great place to put a camera. You could, you're gonna get a lot of inventory of just more, more bucks than does. Oh, you have like the Taj Mahal of, of what, warm, insulated, pretty much scent proof blinds coming and we got a spot for it. And I mean, what else is there to do other than wait? Yeah, that's, I mean, that muddy is going to be a huge game changer when it comes to, you know, sitting in here, not having to worry about the wind. You don't have to play it as much because it's scent tight. Which, I mean, it's already burned me once. And it's going to be... I mean, it's a game changer. And we got a perfect spot on that side of the plot. Of course, we got the earth pond out there, you know, 20, 25 yards away from where you're gonna place the blind. This is all reseeded now in the weak areas. And now we protected it with the Hui Man electric system. I mean, it's dialed. We got a system, dude. We got, I mean, like compared to, I mean, again, last year, I thought it was dialed even going into this year. And now it's completely, we transformed it again. Uh, it's a completely different setup, and to be able to hold this stuff back from deer is mm -hmm. gonna be very interesting. I just like to, it was fun doing it, you know, working on this piece because, you know, we're in phase two yeah. and we're taking it to the next level. This plot was good last year, wasn't great, didn't need to be great yeah. because it was the first year. That's right. Just like your secondary plot that we worked on, you know, um, th those plots will get better and better. This one will too. You'll notice the soil will get better because, you know, that brassica next year is gonna break down, it's gonna add nitrogen into the soil. You could possibly get by with planting soybeans in this plot next year. Uh, from what you said. told me, that's like, that's like, that's so, when you know you've made it. When, it, when the plot's dialed enough to be able to put beans in it, that's when you know you got it. You can it grow out. beans and you can get a good stand of beans. I mean, deer will walk over anything else, in my opinion, especially in Minnesota, to eat soybeans. So um, they become just a, a you know, primary food source for me. Um, I, I give them a variety. Sometimes you have, you know, brassica and beans, whatever, but it's gonna be a good plot. I'm excited about this thing because it's shaping up. You've done a wonderful job on this property and it's really coming together, so. Well, it wouldn't have been possible without my in instructor. <laughs> I found myself thinking that like of more and more things to do, but um, again, it, not knowing and just, you know, having someone to at least who's been through it before to help me along the way has been here. I mean, it's been everything. So I appreciate it, but uh, very much so looking forward to sending you some pictures this fall. Go get them, buddy. I'm figuring out that throughout this process, I'm enjoying the, the land management and these changes that we're making as much as I am looking forward to hunting. But we do have to concentrate on that. Like we got some final stand placements we're gonna put out in the next episode, some final camera areas, and, uh, and just make a few more tweaks before we're ready to hunt the property.